Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Tukes Balmiseneva and I welcome you again on my channel I, Dr. Tutsi. Today I will present you corneal physiology and this topic consists of three parts. And today we, I'm going to present the first part of the presentation, which is going to be about epithelium, about uh, ep corneal epithelium maintenance, about wound healing and uh, a little bit about biochemical components which are participating in the corneal wound healing. So, first part of the presentation. So, epithelium. As we know already, epithelium consists of five seven cells layers, which are apical cells, wing cells, and basal cells. Basal cells, they are located and on the surface of the basal membrane, and then normally there is a corneal cell circulation. Uh, in which the basal cells they proliferate in wing cells, wing cells in their turn proliferate in apical, into apical cells and um, within seven days or at the end of the seven day, seventh day uh, these apical cells they slough out from the surface of the cornea. So about this circulation we're going to talk about uh, a, a little bit later in the slides. I'm going to mention that. So apical cells. The apical surface of the corneal epithelium is specialized to maintain the tear film as microplicare and microvilli, which you can see here uh, in, on the slide, on the photo. On the surface of the most superficial epithelial cells, they are covered with glycocalyx. And glycocalyx with their membrane spanning mucins uh, altogether forms a structure and substance like one millimeter thick mucinous layer of the tear film. And as you can see in this slide, uh, apical cells, they can be light cells and dark cells and uh, based on their maturity. So more mature cells, they are darker and uh, more uh, younger cells, they are lighter. And you can see a photo on this slide as well. Wing cells. Uh, a prominent characteristic of these cells is an abundance of intracellular keratin tonofilaments. Wing cells are distinguished by a variety of polygonal shapes and by their large ovoid nuclei. So basal cells, they contain major keratin pair and minor keratin pair. And the basal cells are distinguished from limbal stem cells by the expression of major keratin pair. This is a single layer of cuboidal cells. And as I said already, they originate from stem cells of uh, limbal epithelium, which are in the periphery of the cornea. And they also contain glycogen. Basement membrane. Basement membrane is, a, is secreted extracellularly by the epithelial cells and forms one of several structural components associated with cell adhesion to Bowman's layer or stroma. And as you can see in this slide, basement membrane consists of three layers, which are lamina lucida, lamina densa, and reticular lamina. And reticular lamina is located within a Bowman layer. So, a little bit about cell adhesion in the epithelium. There are two types of adhesion in the epithelium, which are cell to cell and cell to substance. So, when we say uh, cell to cell adhesion or attachment, let's say that it's already obvious that it's just the connection between cells. But when we say about a cell to substance connection, we mean the connection between basal cells and a basal membrane. So, so the connection between cells uh, is provided uh, with desmosomes and between basal cells and basement membrane, uh, this connection is provided um, with uh, hemidesmosomes. So the primer structure or like, let's say primer component of hemidesmosomes, it's bullous pemphigoid antigen with integrin heterodimer. So this, uh, let's say this complex is linked uh, with keratin filaments. In basement layer from the hemidesmosomes, um, 
they're, they are forming uh, like uh, hemidesmosomes. They are linking to, they are linked with anchoring fibrils. And later, these anchoring fibrils, they go through the bomus membrane and then end up in the stroma by anchoring plaques. And they end up in the anterior surface of the stroma uh, uh, in two mi micron, or let's say, yeah, micron uh, depths. Additionally, we need to know about the junctional complexes of the cornea. And there are two types of junctional complexes of the cornea, tight junction, or gap junction, <laughs> and tight junction. Gap junction is uh, more nu numerous in the basal layers than in the superficial layers. And this junction between basal layers, uh, basal cells, I'm sorry, and wing cells forms uh, a functional synthetium and which is very important uh, in coordinating functions such as cell differentiation and migration. Tight junction is only between superficial cells. So this membrane of the surface of the cornea uh, is uh, strong due to tight junction between cells and it's very important to the barrier function of the cornea. So this is a schematic representation of the localization of tight junction, which, is, which are dark boxes, uh, hemidesmosomes or desmosomes, uh, which are hatched boxes, and gap junctions, which are dotted boxes in the cornea. So here in the slide, it's uh, very distinguishable. Uh, as I said already at the beginning of the presentation about the maintenance of the corneal epithelium, as I said, there is like a normal cell circulation of the, on the surface of the cornea. So this is like a schematic uh, presentation of this process. So the source of the new basal cells, they are proliferate from the basal cells of limbal epithelium. This is like a band of cells. Um, 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter wide uh, at the periphery of the cornea. And so these cells, they are proliferate into TA cells or transient amplifying cells, as you can see here. And then during the all division and differentiation, um, they reach to the top surface of the cornea and just um, sloughing out uh, with their tear with a tear. So another hypothesis, let's say, of maintenance of the corneal epithelium, it's a XYZ hypothesis. So as you can see here in the slide, it's a very clear here and very schematical actually presentation of all this process. So where X is a proliferation of basal cells, Y is a centripetal movement of cells and Z, uh, Z is a cell loss from the surface. Now let's continue with epithelial wound healing. As the cornea uh, gets injury, there are three main steps of corneal healing. Cell migration, cell proliferation and cell adhesion. But before all these three steps, the cornea passes through uh, some kind of uh, biochemical preparation of the whole tissue, where biochemical picture is totally changing and uh, preparing the corneal tissue to all these three steps of healing. So, and this phase called latent phase. So let's just uh, talk a little bit uh, uh, about every step of epithelium wound healing. So cell migration. As uh, I told earlier, limbal corneal epithelial uh, stem cells, they produce progenitor cells that are responsible for corneal epithelial cell regen uh, regeneration. And uh, the stem cells are normally slow cycling, but the, it can be stimulated after wounding uh, to produce many rapidly dividing TA cells that help in healing corneal surface injuries. And it has been known already for some time that corneal injuries, they can be replaced by vascular conjunctival epithelium. And it also understood that under normal circumstances, the limbal epithelium acts as an inhibitory barrier 
to the migration of a conjunctival epithelium on the surface of the cornea. But sometimes when the corneal epithelial injury also includes the limbus, this barrier can be permanently destroyed. Next step is a cell proliferation. The migratory step is a process that is uh, absolutely independent from cell proliferation. This migratory st uh, step includes the cells which are moving towards the central part of the cornea. Both basal and suprabasal cells, they participate, of course, in the migratory process, as epithelial cells appear to prefer to migrate centripetally, as I said. But commonly, individual or small groups of epithelial cells, they migrate independently from the coherent form and moving, by moving independently, they uh, form some kind of clockwise whirl or uh, yeah, clockwise whirl uh, pattern on the surface of the healing cornea. And this unique pattern of healing uh, has been termed hurricane keratopathy. I would like to share with you with one clinical case. Um, it's not a clinical case from my own experience. Uh, there is a reference under uh, in the slide below. So this is a clinical case um, of a 11 years old female patient, which came to their doctor with the complaints of severe ocular pain in the right eye. And she was diagnosed um, with a superficial traumatic ulcer. And of course, the treatment uh, was prescribed. She was prescribed topical antibiotics and artificial tears, and normally was controlled uh, within 10, one week and a few days. And, um, in, and at the end, after four weeks of the initial presentation, here what she has on the cornea. And as you can see here, she presents this kind of hurricane um, pattern uh, on the surface. And so this is exactly like a first step of uh, healing process, uh, I'm sorry, second proliferation step of the uh, of healing, uh, of corneal healing. So, and this is a clockwise vortex world pattern. And this is a hurricane keratopathy. And in this slide, you can see another photos of uh, the same clinical uh, picture with um, st fluorescein stained cornea and without fluorescein stained. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, this picture in my own database, but I'm sure if you have uh, patients with uh, ulcer and when you check this patient like uh, later, after treatment, you can see this um, picture easily, and I'm sure you, you've met already. The next step is cell addition. Also, uh, epithelial, although epithelial cell migration occurs without hemidesmosomes, because there is no hemidesmosomes uh, formed uh, during the process of healing, there is still a maintained um, like a focal uh, structure or there is like a focal contact between the basal migratory epithelial cells and this um, component, a micromolecular contact, let's say like that, known as adhesion plaques. So all these migratory cells, they're attached to base, basal lamina with this adhesion plaques. And this attachment is not really strong. That's why during the healing, the epithelium is really uh, easily uh, can be peeled off. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And as I said, uh, the ad adhesion between these cells is not really strong and this temporary um, adhesion plaques, they stop forming after wound closure. Uh, so once the wound is totally closed, the adhesion plaques are not forming anymore and normal desmosomes are uh, recovering or forming, let's say like that, again. 
and the rapidity with which these permanent adhesion complexes form depends on whether the epithelial basal lamina remains intact or not. So in case when basal um, base, basement layer is not involved in the injury, then the, the total recovering period is about one week. But when the basal lamina is involved in the injury, then the whole uh, total time of recovery may be within six weeks, approximately, yeah. So there are just a few cases of uh, clinical manifestation of abnormalities in epithelium surface. So it's uh, epithelial basement membrane dystrophy with fingerprints and dot changes. So usually, as I said already, epithelial injury heals rapidly and uneventfully. But of course, occasionally there might be cases when um, uh, persistent epithelial defects or recurrent corneal erosion develop and this is due to deficiency in the migratory or proliferation steps or to the uh, or due to cell adhesion step uh, any deficiencies in the cell adhesion step respectively and uh, in this slides in this uh, further slides i would like to mention a little bit about the main corneal bio chemical components, so which are taking part in epithelial movement and um, take an important role in the epithelial wound healing uh, process. So this is a fibronectin integrin system. Fibronectin uh, provides a provisional matrix during the first phase of epithelial wound healing in many tissues and in cornea as well. Hyaluronan is also recognized as a biological signaling molecule and like fibronectin plays an important role in inflammation and wound healing. And in a normal cornea, hyaluronan is not presenting. Then is proteolytic enzymes, then cytokines uh, and cytokines and growth factors such as epidermal, epidermal growth factor, transforming growth factor B, basic fibroblast growth factor, and interleukins. Interleukins and cytokines, they regulate the function of the immune system, inflammation, and other reactions of the tissue. Yeah, two external stimuli. And this was the first part of corneal physiology. And the next part is going to be about Bowman's layer and stroma. Uh, I hope you find this uh, presentation informative for you. And I hope it's interesting for you too. Uh, keep yourself updated. I'm going to see you again on the next uh, part. I'm wishing you a good day. Bye.